All right. Hey. How to lose weight without dieting on weekends. So I wrote this, it's a blog. We're going to go over it and speak a little bit more detail into it. So we're not just gonna do literally a straight read through, but we are gonna read it and talk about it and I don't know, digest it. Add my commentary. <laughs> your sidekick, what'd you call me earlier? I don't know, you're, com you're the comedian who interjects things and I don't know. Yeah. You just just do good. <laughs> I do good. Okay. Right. Oh well. So we're gonna go over this. The reason oh, I was gonna say the reason why I did this is because this is all real life right now. I'm actually doing this. Uh, so that we're gonna talk about the strategy that I'm using for weight loss uh, without dieting on the weekends and what all that means. If you have any questions about this, then leave them in there. We'll answer them. Um, if you would rather just read the blog, you can also let us know and we'll send you the link to that. Uh, once it's published, because it's not up yet, but it will be very soon. So, anything else? You want to talk about your day or anything before we get started? No. <laughs> okay. This is going to be a lot, I feel like. So, I do want to just kind of jump in. I think that's a good idea. And I, that's why I said that. No. <laughs> the only comment I was going to say is that I feel like we're dressed very differently because you look nice and I'm just like chilling. I just always look the same. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Weekends can be the hardest part of the weight loss diet. I know for a lot of our clients, weekends. Most of them. And I know when I talk to them, it's because it has less structure usually. Mm. Like it's less routine, it's less predictable. That this is tough happen. From week to week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know it's for us, that's when we're running around. We're, we tend to eat out more on the weekends we, or if we're getting we together with friends. We don't get up at the same time. Or even if we're just, yeah, if we're just hanging out at home, we are playing games or watching TV and we're having treats. and Doing projects. Yeah, and, that's yeah. real life. Um, and there are times where like, if you're gonna do weight loss, you might just need to be more disciplined on the weekend and that might just need to be part of it. But also, it's not something that you can do for a really long time and expect that to be realistic. So, like if you've got super long weight loss goals, they're long term, or or you just want your weekends to be less stressful, then this strategy that we're going to talk about, as far as how to lose weight without being without dieting on the weekends, um, that might be something that's at least worth considering. So I'm going to talk about why I'm using this strategy. So I've been doing it for about a month now. Um, First, I want to give you the three reasons why I'm doing this and why I'm even choosing to lose weight at all right now because I think they might be kind of surprising for most people. So the first reason why I'm doing this is because I don't need to lose weight. So <laughs> I'm already at a healthy weight. I feel good. I'm decently strong. I'm not limited with any of my physical activities. We can go hiking. We can go swimming. I Just keeping up with my kids, all of that, I feel really good about. Chase after the postman. We're not going to tell that story. <laughs> if you want to know that, you'll have to ask us in person. Um, let's see. So <laughs> that, that threw me off. I didn't, didn't think you'd bring that up. So, okay. So why is not needing to lose weight an actual reason to attempt weight loss? So yes, I already have a quality of life that I physically feel really good about. And what I want to show is that not only is it possible to get where I am, you can actually go a lot further than that with really moderate, realistic efforts. So I'm doing this for you to show you that it's possible to get where you want. It's probably possible to get further than what you want. Not that you need to, but I just want to show that, that it is possible. So that's reason one. Number two is because I wasn't motivated to do this at all. I think I talked about doing this for like a month before I actually started because yeah. I just didn't want to. I kept asking, when are you going to do it? And you're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Weight loss is not ever fun, no. um, and the fact that I don't need to lose weight makes it even less appealing. But the thing is, no one is always motivated, so I figured, again, for the sake of anybody watching this or, or reading this, that it's a good opportunity to show that if you have the right strategies in place, motivation is not necessary to get great results. Mm -hmm. So that's reason two. And then reason three is just kind of things we talked about already, which is that weekends throw people off. So this is this specific strategy is a way for me to have regular mental breaks from the fatigue of weight loss, but it's also just a way to show that weekends don't have to be something that interferes with your goals. So I've got five rules that I'm living by to uh, make this work. Cool. And I'm gonna go over them because okay. if you wanna do this, these five rules are will be necessary yeah. for you too. For sure, because you can't just do whatever you want. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, as cool as it sounds to say I'm not dieting on the weekends, that doesn't just mean do whatever you want. So, sorry, I ruined, I ruined the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number one is that real quick. Yep. I'm sorry to interrupt your flow. No. And everybody who's anticipating the rule, um, I am watching comments come in. If you have questions come in, that's what I'm here to answer and, and ask questions. So feel free to interact. And if you're watching this live or later, let us know so we can get back to you. Okay. Rule number one. Rule number one. Eat more food on weekends. Duh. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying, when I'm not, when I say that I'm not dieting on the weekends, what I really mean is I'm eating like normal. So I'm not in a calorie deficit. So if I ate the way that I'm doing on the weekends all the time, I would never lose weight. But I'm also not overeating, meaning I would never gain weight if I always ate this way either. So in other words, my life on the weekends right now is what my eating habits should look like all the time for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Now I've spent years, literally years, ingraining these habits so that I can stay in total control of my weight <clears throat> Excuse me, which is, I mean, that's literally something I feel super confident about because I know how to do this and I put a lot of work into it. I can, I can stay in control of my weight all the time without really even having to think about it very much. Um, but if you've ever only worked on weight loss specifically, you might find that it's actually not any easier to eat well when you're not trying to lose weight, at least in the beginning. So it can become something that gets easier and becomes more like second nature for sure. Mm -hmm. But at first, it might be just as difficult. So um, for this strategy to work, the point is you have to be as in, as intentional about what you eat on the weekends as you are during the week. The difference is you get to eat more, which feels pretty good. So it's still, still a benefit, um, still can make it easier, but I don't want you to think that it's just some magic pill either that you just do this and it's like, oh, weight loss is easy now. So that's rule one. Rule two is just as obvious. I eat less food on the weekdays. So Monday through Friday, I have to eat low calorie enough to actually lose weight. So the real decision here is settling on how quickly I wanna do that. Um, it's, it's not healthy to go too quickly, but I also don't want the process to be so slow that it feels like nothing's happening. So the last time that I did weight loss, um, I did it at a pace of around a pound and a half a week which for me and for my size, that's almost as fast as what I can go and have it be healthy. It's pretty consistent, pretty strict too. Yeah, it's, it's on the fast end, yeah. um, but it's healthy. Any, any faster than that would become unhealthy and, and unmanageable. Um, so I could have made up for the weekends and how I'll be eating more on the weekends by eating even less during the week, but that seemed like a really bad idea. Um, so I chose to eat the same amount as what I did last time when I was dieting all seven days of the week, even if that meant a slower rate of weight loss. I just figured that made the most sense. So what I did change was I decided to pay more attention to my step count this time and making sure that I'm walking more. Um, so that way I didn't have to eat less, but I could maybe make up some of the difference because I'd be a little bit more active with just walking, which is, Normally, another challenge. It's another challenge, but it's an it's an it's one of those things that's a a, a simple thing to change, um, without you know without feeling like you're upending your life. So, and I've been doing this for four weeks now, and I've lost around six pounds in those four weeks, which is an average of about a pound and a half per week. Again, so I'm losing about the same rate as what I was before, even though I'm eating more now on the weekends. So just something to remember. So rule number three is to leave some wiggle room. And to be fair, this is a rule that should always be in place all the time whenever you try weight loss. Um, so I'm a big believer in making goals and having a very clear understanding of exactly what you're gonna do in order to achieve those goals. But I definitely do not like having strict goals that you can't reasonably change at a moment's notice without feeling like a failure. In fact, that's a really big part of achieving any goal is being able to change certain things about it as you go. So just to give an example, um, let's say you need to eat around 1500 calories on the weekdays to lose weight. Don't make the goal 1500, make the goal 1500 to 1600. Give yourself a window. Now we don't actually count calories at all and we don't have our calorie, our clients, clients count yeah. calories. Mm -hmm. 
So, which we can talk more about or, or show you some resources on, on how to do it instead. Um, but I just want to point that out just as an example. And then on top of the, having that window of how much you can eat, if there's an event on a weekday where you're normally eating less, or if you're just out and about, something comes up, you need to have the freedom to step outside of those boundaries even more every once in a while. So the more you do that, the more, the, the slower your weight loss is going to be. But if you pick and choose the right times to do it and you're not just constantly going outside the boundaries, then that's going to help with just adhering to it overall. And the effect on your weight loss is going to be really small. So for me, only losing 1.3 pounds per week would never be a good reason to turn down drinks with friends to celebrate a special occasion. So leave that wiggle room, give yourself some flexibility. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to be super strict about it. Rule number four is absolutely no cheat meals. So I wanna be crystal clear about this. This is not, the weekend is not cheat days. I'm not doing cheat meals. There really shouldn't be that big of a difference between how you eat normally and how you do it for weight loss. Not so much where you feel like you have to cheat just to enjoy good food. So you do have to eat less when you're losing weight, but the overarching principles stay the same. So for example, no matter what goal I'm working on, I am always prioritizing protein at every meal and just getting a, a balance of all nutrients, including carbs and fats. Um, I am eating as much minimally processed foods as possible. I am drinking mostly water. I'm doing my best to eat a ton of veggies. And then I'm also staying aware, again, without being militant about it, of how often and how much I indulge in treats. So I pay a bit more attention to that when I'm doing weight loss, but I definitely do not foster a mindset of good or bad foods that I am, okay, I eat this when I'm trying to be good, or I'm not eating this because I'm trying to be good right now. Or just all out binge, too, on anything. Yeah specific that you just feel like you haven't been able to have exactly that and that's what that mentality tends to do is that it will cause you to lose control um, which can undo all of your hard work even if you're just doing it two days out of the week yeah um, so if you want to make healthy eating yeah and then it becomes a pattern yeah and it's really hard to break okay in fact it's a pattern that most people have already fallen into mm -hmm. without realizing it mm -hmm. so it's already something that's difficult to break um, but if you want to make healthy eating a more natural part of your life, the point is um, you need to get out of that all or nothing mindset, which is something that cheat meals actually encourage yeah. is all, all or nothing. You're all in or you're not and yeah. you can do whatever you, you want. You need to start building habits that are going to be more realistic for the rest of your life. I feel like a lot of people who are good at dieting have that mindset because mm -hmm. they, they can do it while they're all in. And then when they don't diet, it's nothing and they don't know how to maintain what they've done. Yeah. And I, I've run into that a lot. And that goes back to what I was saying. Um, well, actually, I don't know if I've said it now. Now I'm lost about where I am. Sorry. I'm not going to bring it up because I, I think I'm going to say it later. But that, that brings up another point that I am going to mention. Um, but I, let's just go to rule five, which is live a normal life. Please. So uh, <laughs> along with eating normal foods all the time. Unless, okay, wait. Unless you have like super ambitious body composition goals or athletic goals. Which you don't which because... You don't. If you, you're here. Because you're here, and that's not who we work with, that's not who we are, and that's not what we do. So if that's who you are, then feel free to go watch somebody else, because that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> Live a normal life, because that's what we do, that's what we teach, and yeah, if you don't want that, that's fine, but you're not going to find that advice here. So, um, so here are a few of the specific strategies I use to maintain a normal life. So, for example, I pretty much always work out around... Normal. I just, I had to go to around two to three times a week. That's how often I work out. I'm not ramping that up just because I'm losing weight. In fact, if anything, normally I'm pretty good about working out three times a week. I'm, you know, if I do twice, that's fine. But when I'm losing weight, I will actually probably average more like two a week um, or closer to it just because I'm trying to allow extra recovery. I'm not, I hate my workouts when I'm losing weight because it's harder, your body's more tired. So I'm not changing that by doing a ton of extra exercise. I mentioned that I am walking more, um, but that's really a habit that I've been building up even before I started doing this weight loss. So it's really not that different from my normal routine. 
Um, I'm a bit more intentional about like if I've got a day where I've been sitting at the computer all day, mm -hmm. then I'll really, I'll make sure that, okay, I definitely need to make sure I go out, go for maybe a little bit longer walk this time, but it's, it's still within the realm of what's normal for me. Um, I have specific strategies for how I handle my meals. So like I'll eat a bigger breakfast that works well for me, or I'll sometimes have a later lunch. I shy away from foods that are not as filling. Uh, those types of things all make weight loss easier for me. Thought of one more. Yeah. You don't skip meals. I definitely don't skip meals. I never do that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, the, but the, the point is the exact strategies that I'm using may need to be a little bit different for you. Um, but the point is this should make it easier. So don't just go and do something because you heard some expert say that, oh, this is some sciencey way to speed up your metabolism or something like that. If it if it's forcing you to make separate meals for your family or to eat when you're not hungry or to wait to eat until you're starved, then don't do it. The, those strategies are not good for you and there's no point in, in doing it. Stick to habits and routines that closely resemble real life for you mm. or at least things that you feel you can confidently say will become a normal part of your life without adding undue stress. Yeah. So if you feel like, oh, my life is so unhealthy right now, I have to do these things that aren't normal for me. Maybe yes, to some extent that is true, but don't go from here to way over here. Do, you know, you know stick, stick close and build up until mm -hmm. you get to those points and then you'll find what's gonna be realistic. And for what you. you find really important too. So the real question now is, should you try this? So before you, uh, before you do, I just want to mention this isn't for everybody. It could actually be very disastrous for some people. Yeah. Especially if you're in that all or nothing mindset. Yeah, yes, for sure. So ask yourself, this, it's not something we do with most of our clients, by the way. We do with some. Some of them. Yeah. Some of it works for So it just, it kind of depends. But it could I, be a slippery slope. Yes, so you really want to make sure that this is going to be a good fit for you. The first thing I would ask is, are you super confident that you know exactly how much to eat to lose weight at a pace that is healthy and you know exactly how much to eat to maintain your weight? Because I do because I've been doing this for a long time, so it makes it a little bit easier to know where my points are for how much to eat. And you understand how it works. I understand how it works. Probably if you're watching this, if you're being honest with yourself, the answer to that question is no. Because again, you wouldn't be here if you did know those things. Because um, you would already be somebody who does this well and doesn't need help with it. So that now, just because the answer is no, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. But it will make, it, it does take a little bit more effort to make it work. Um, so I want to give two specific recommendations with it. One is be conservative. So don't eat way too little on the weekdays. Uh, start with a conservative estimate of a conservative rate of weight loss um, and, and, and stay there. Like don't drop down super low and don't adjust things until you've got at least a couple weeks of really consistent tracking to kind of see what's going on. Um, and then also don't eat way more on the weekends. In fact, start with wherever you're at for weight loss, just bump it up just a little bit on the weekends. Um, enough to where it feels a little bit easier, but where you might still actually be losing some weight yeah. because you're still not eating quite as much as what you could be to for maintain. For some clients, it's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to have, you know, one more serving of this for the whole day. And yep. Just have like one more little thing. Just yep. To, just to be real specific about what that looks like. And then you can... Once you kind of see where you're at and you know, then you can spread it out a little bit if you need to and maybe go, okay, I could probably eat a little bit less or I could eat a little bit more on the weekends and you figure it out and that's fine. But that brings me to my second recommendation for making this work, which is get help. Because, so a common mistake is thinking that once you start losing weight, then great, I've got it figured out. I know what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep doing this and I'm going to keep getting the same results. And the truth is that never happens <laughs> ever. It's actually impossible to have that happen unless your goal is to lose like one pound and then you're already there and then boom, you're done. But if you want to keep going, things are going to change because your body is changing. So even figuring out how much to eat, that's not a one step process. No matter what online calculator you go and find or whatever special weight loss equation you use to figure out how much you should be eating, it's going to be inaccurate 
to some extent, or it will change as you go, even if it happens to be accurate right at the get go, which it probably won't, then eventually it will change over time. So unless you're okay with a whole bunch of trial and error and potentially never reaching your goals because it's hard to figure this stuff out on your own, then get help from somebody, my voice is changing, get help from someone who can guide you through the whole process. Someone like us who will literally guarantee your success if you become a client and work with us. Doesn't have to be us, but we will guarantee it for you. So, uh, you know, there's no risk. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. There's one last thing. I'm bumping the tripod over here. If you try this, if you do this strategy and you see really good progress with it, um, then that's awesome. Go ahead and stick with it. If it feels good and, and it's helping, then do it. But on the other hand, if you find that you don't like the back and forth and, you know, okay, now I mean this, now I mean this. If you don't like that, you'd rather just keep things steady. That's okay too. There isn't one strategy that you have to follow. The goal should be follow those overarching principles that I mentioned earlier um, and in the, in the no cheat meals section if you want to go back and listen to it or if you read if you want to go read the blog you can go look um follow those overarching principles but any strategy beyond those things that shouldn't make it easier to apply those principles and not more stressful so those are the things that you have to keep in place and then anything like this specific strategy is just a matter of is this helping me do these main things mm -hmm. and is it making it easy and not causing a whole bunch of stress because if it is then it's not worth doing because you want to live here and find strategies that will help you live there. Absolutely. Did you have anything you were going to add? No, I don't remember what it was now. So I, I probably said it earlier, but it doesn't matter unless you yeah. remember. Uh -uh. Okay. No, so it, it doesn't matter. I, I, there was a lot in there and I feel like even trying to go back and, and go over anything would just be yeah. too much at this point. So if, if, if you, you want to go back and skim the article, we can give you the link. So you can go back and do that, or you can rewatch the video and catch a part of it if you'd like. Yep. So, Otherwise, that's it. that's it for tonight. All right. Uh, let us know if you have questions. We're going to do another Q&A session coming up in a few weeks, and we'd love for you to submit questions. You can comment on the video or just private message us so we can get that uh, answered for you. All right. Cool. All right. See you soon. Adios.